Hey guys, this is Coffee for HUSNG.com. Uh, today I'm discussing math and heads up sit and goes, and this is the part four of my series. Um, so just a quick review. Um, last time we uh, discussed maximizing total equity. Uh, it's been the overall theme. Um, we use a lot of algebra and software um, to maximize our binary decisions. Um, and so these were always in comparison to folding. That was one of the limitations. Um, and we overall tried to discuss uses and limitations for this in-game, as well as uh, for out-of-game study. And I tried to give uh, recommendations for further study at every point. The idea of having a good grounding in math is to make your study time more efficient uh, and more effective um, overall. And so I tried to sort of set some examples, um, give some examples for how to compute things so that you can do them on your own. So today we're just going to drop the numbers. Um, there's no algebra. I know a lot of you guys are, are very happy about this. And we're going to be discussing uh, basic game theory terms and theories. Um, so, so the idea of this is to give us, uh, allow us to give a more formal meaning to terms that you commonly hear at the tables, um, just so that we all are speaking um, the same language. Uh, we'll be focusing on how they apply to uh, heads up, sit and goes, as, as always, um, and what we can use to increase our bottom line or improve our in-game thought process. Um, obviously, a lot of game theory is very abstract, um, you know, and a lot of it can be very interesting, but maybe not um, increasing your bottom line. So I'm going to try, um, especially at the end, to focus in and give you sort of the uses and applications of this stuff. And just to keep in mind, our final goal is to allow us to use our mathematical tools, um, all those algebra things, um, and we'll still have to develop some new ones, but um, at least use those, um, to improve our decision process today as effectively as possible. So the idea of using this game theory um, is to be able to then take those mathematical tools um, and really uh, allow us to, to construct uh, strategies to, to be able to improve our expectation in game, uh, to sort of be able to put everything together. Um, game theory sometimes act as sort of a glue. All right, so, um, so let's just uh, talk about some basic definitions. Um, I tend to use sort of some of the uh, abstract definitions. Uh, so uh, a game is just a mapping or, or like a type of function. Um, from a set of strategies to a set of payoffs that's indexed by players. Um, that is to say, um, you know, we have some, some number of players, and um, all of them can pick some strategies, and then um, after they've all picked their strategies, um, we figure out sort of who won or how much each person won, and that's the payoffs um, that are linked to, um, you know, whenever it picked their strategies. And so this is, this is hsng.com. Um, let's just use two players. Um, have them be players one and two. Um, and often I'll refer to player one as hero, player two as villain, to follow poker convention. I mean, it's just to give some indexing uh, to be able to differentiate the two players. Um, obviously, game theory gets a lot more complicated as you add more players. Um, so in general, a lot of this stuff is um, applicable to multiplayer games, um, but I'm going to try to focus in on, on two-player stuff so that it's a, a heads-up, sit-and-go um, applicable. Um, so in the case of heads-up, sit-and-goes, um, each player has a strategy. Um, and this is a pretty big idea. We'll, we'll get into what a strategy is, but a strategy sort of encompasses everything you'll ever do in a game. Um, and then the game, the heads up, sit and go, maps um, the two strategies that is for each player into just a probabilistic percent of the prize pool, your win rate. Um, that's probably the best way to think of our payoff um, as just your win rate. Um, so, so given two players, one and two, our game G um, takes their strategies, we'll call them S1 and S2, um, and assigns them win rates. And so there's WR1, WR2, um, and then Poker Stars runs the, the random number generator of Doom uh, to assign the winner. Um, notice that this is sort of a really abstract take on the game. Like this is sort of what's happening. Um, this is when you take out all of those little things that are happening inside the game and focus on the bigger picture and say that, well, you know, player one has some overall strategy of what he does, and then player two has some overall strategy. And those things will end up giving some win rate. And then all of the little RNG stuff that happens in the game will decide who actually wins. Uh, it's basically so then just the RNG decides the winner and our strategies give us win rates. And so we can write this all compactly as just G, which is our mapping, takes some S1 cross S2. Um, that's the two strategies um, and maps them as a little arrow, maps them into two win rates, uh, one for every player. All right, so then what is a strategy? So let's have a player's strategy be a rule that assigns to every decision point found in the game a corresponding decision. So basically, um, whenever you have some 
um, action that you can do, um, your strategy will dictate what you do. Um, and that, you know, that means pre-flop, post-flop, everywhere uh, will give you your what a strategy is. So again, it's this really big idea. It's a really big thing. A strategy is not something that we can even, you know, it's even something hard to think about uh, because it's just so huge. It's that whole decision tree uh, throughout the game. Um, so let's keep going with some more definitions. So let's let a static strategy be a strategy that does not change based on time in a match or history, what's happened. So st static strategy is just, um, you know, we go into the game with a certain sort of game plan and it's not going to change based on what hand number we're at and it's not going to change based on sort of what's happened in the match. Um, conversely, we can let a dynamic strategy is a strategy that does depend on time in sort of a non-trivial way. Um, so either, you know, it depends on how long the game's gone, number of hands, um, as well as just history. You know, what's happened in that first three hands or whatever. So, so not only can it be dependent on hand number four, let's say you play differently on hand number four than on hand three, that's a dynamic strategy. Um, you know, you could, for instance, always limp when it's hand number four and always min-raise at hand number three. That's a dynamic strategy. But you can also use what's happened in hand number three. Let's say whenever you win hand number three, you min-raise in hand four. That would be also a uh, you know part of a dynamic strategy. A static strategy can't do that, essentially. That's the idea of strat uh, static strategy. Um, a mixed strategy is a strategy in which um, the decision is a set of decisions that are chosen probabilistically. Um, that is, you know, if we have, um, let's say at some point we have a decision to min-raise or to limp, um, a mixed strategy would allow us to do something like um, limp 50% of the time and min-raise 50% of the time. That is, we actually, you know, take a coin and flip it or some other random number generator and flip it, and that chooses what we do. Um, conversely, a pure strategy has only one decision for each unique decision point. But notice that, you know, you know it can still look like, you know, we can still be um, opening 50% of hands and folding 50% of the time. That's still pure strategy. Um, the difference is just what's going on with our specific hands. So, for instance, if we um, open uh, queen two off 100% of the time and fold jack two off 100% of the time, that's a pure type of strategy. But if we um, open uh, queen two off 50% of the time and fold queen two off 50% of the time, that would be a mixed uh, part of a mixed strategy. Um, so, so let's just go into specific examples. So again, a strategy would assign a range of hands to every decision. Um, you can just think of it as like a set of ranges or a range of ranges, one for every single decision point. Um, so like pre-flop, it would be your, you know, your opening range um, and your limping range and your folding range. And then um, when you're villain three bets, it encompasses what you do versus three bets. And then it encompasses what you do on every single flop. Um, but in every place, it's a range of hands. Um, and again, a static strategy is one that does not adapt to a villain and also not based on history. That's what we've uh, talked about. A dynamic strategy um, you know, differs based on what has happened so far or based on number of hands. Um, and then a mixed strategy is one that includes ranges that include probabilistic elements. Right, so like, again, 50% uh, of the time we limp aces, 50% of the time we open. Um, so another sort of important thing to think about to make some of these things not as big um, is to talk about restrictions. So for instance, given a game G, we can talk about a restriction of the game to a smaller, less complex game. So example, we can think of limit Texas Hold'em as a restriction on no limit Texas Hold'em. It's the same game, but there's a restriction on bet sizes. The bet size, sort of, the game isn't as big because we can't bet any arbitrary amount bigger than a big blind. You have to only bet the, the, the one bet size. Another example is push fold heads up poker. It's a restriction of full heads up poker. If we restrict players to only be able to push or fold pre-flop, that's again a restriction, a game restriction. And similarly, we can also talk about restrictions of strategies um, by restricting to a certain part of the strategy. So we can um, think of a range as a restriction of our total strategy to one decision point. I think that's a really useful way of thinking about our range in different spots. Um, and conversely, sort of a good way of thinking about what our strategy is. Again, it's, it's, a, it's a range for every decision point. So we can also think of um, little individual strategies as just ranges. Um, we can also think of like the mercenary raffle chart is a, is a total strategy, but it's restricted to just pre-flop, um, 12 big blinds, and small blinds, uh, and the small blind. So, so it's also a strategy because it, um, it's a little bit more than a range, though. Notice because it also talks about what hands were min-raised folding, what hands are min-raised getting it in. 
um, what hands were sort of like calling. So it does do more than just, oh, it's not just a range. It is sort of a strategy. But again, it's restricted specifically to preflop. It doesn't talk about what happens when villain flats. It's restricted to, you know, the 12 big blind bubble that he talks about. It's not really meant for any other stack depth. And again, it's restricted to a small blind. It doesn't talk about what we do in big blind. So that's why it's a restriction. 